Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the ABL podcast. Or oh, whoops, not the ABL podcast. Dakota's not here. This is the ABL review. Uh, here to talk about week one for season twenty-two of the South Division. Um, you know what? Got a, got a lot to talk about today. Not necessarily the South, just overall. I'm recording these back to back, so um, let's just hop into the games. Yeah, uh, place. There we go. Good. So first we've got Tex Toxics taking on, uh, the Texarkana Toxics, sorry, taking on Mike in the Washington War Turtles. One of these days he's going to hammer down a name and stick with it. So, um, at team preview here, I mean, like, I I had nice things to say about Pavcoon's team at the beginning of the season. I like the matchup here. I think the scariest thing for Mike is the fact that he doesn't have a ghost resist on this team. That is definitely going to be something he has to contend with with Dragapult. Arguably the best Mon in the format, um, or at least one of the best Mons in the format, top five for sure, um, on the other side of the field. So we'll hop into things. we got Rotom Heat leading off here against Gardevoir. They're actually going to trade Choice Scarfs here, first of all. Um, now we're going to discover something. So we get the Rotom Volt switching out. So really nothing lost on the road. I'm just like a little bit of information gained, a little bit of damage gotten, right? He's going to go into Iron Treads. So, Papcoon went to Iron Treads here because he thought, okay, now this Gardevoir is locked into Trick. So, um, you will be locked, when you have a Choice Scarf, you'll be locked into the first move you use while you are holding the Choice Scarf. Um, so, for example, if so this thing tricked and... It lost its choice scarf, so it's no longer choice locked. And then it gained a new choice scarf, but it hasn't chosen a move with that second choice scarf yet, so it is not currently locked into a move. Um, so it's actually able to pick a different move here and go for Aorus here and get off good damage on the Siren Treads as rocks go up. Uh, good news, bad news is he took a lot of damage. Good news is he knows what it's locked into and he has an immunity in the back, able to go into Dragapult. Um, and now he's just able to fire off an unresisted Shadow Ball against his team, do a good amount of damage. U-turn is not something I would have done here. Um, a couple seasons ago, I ranted and raved about how sick and tired I was about watching games where people were paralyzed all the time. And that's in no small part because of Pokemon like Zapdos, which has static, which just loves to paralyze everybody. So we're going to come into Iron Treads as he U-turns out, gains a little bit of momentum. Ogapon Wellspring is going to come in. Mandibuzz is going to come in, able to uh, take a crit Ivy Cudgel pretty well, in all honesty. He's then going to U-turn out, bring Colossal. Interesting thing, we don't see the Heavy Duty Boots come up here. Um, I don't see know if we see what item he's rocking. Let's say Leftovers. It's Leftovers. There we go. So he's going to try to... So he doesn't even try to get off the Rapid Spin here. He's going to go for the Power Gym, do a little bit of damage on Glamora. And then pivot in, cover the Earth Power with Zapdos. Smart move there. Discharge is going to come out. A lot of crits early on in this game. I feel like we see a lot of crits in the league as things go. Um, so discharge for a good amount of damage. Uh, and now we're going to see the Ogre Pond come out as it eats an overheat. Obviously, I'm guessing trying to grab that Mamoswine just in case. But getting the Ogre Pond is not a bad move. Now, Ogre Pond obviously can't be heavy-duty boots due to the fact that it has to hold the Wellspring Mask. Um, so this Ogre Pond's uh, survival is dependent on spinning on Col with Colossal here. So we're going to get Mandibuzz come in. Colossal's going to come in, unfortunately, take Rock's damage. And then we're going to see a U-turn from the Mandibuzz here. Now, um, two things about this play. One... Uh, I think, so I, I, I would have been, again, leery to, um, to U-turn here, because what if Zapdos comes in for no reason, or what if this is Flame Body and you burn your Mandibuzz, but, <laughs> sorry, um, Mike revealed after the battle we were talking to him, this is actually Flash Fire Colossal, which... Kind of makes sense due to the fact that he came in on that overheat, probably just trying to get the flash fire boost, and it would have been a good opportunity to try to spin, right? So he comes in here, he turns out, Dragapult comes in, blocks the spin. And Mike just says, cut his losses, and be like, this 
Ogre Pond, even if it comes back, what is it going to do a lot of good? I'm just going to sack it to the rocks and get a clean switch in. He goes into Mammoth Swine um, and eats this Surf. I was surprised at how much this Surf did. Like, I know Dragapult's strong, but obviously against this team, uh, Pepkin figured he could go ahead and run Modest Nature. I think we figured out that was Expert Belt. Really kind of surprised to see Surf KO there. Um, does pick up the KO. And then we're going to see the uh, Gardevoir come and kind of has to go for Moonblast here. So you're just going to be able to eat that up. See a knockoff. Again, kind of a risky knockoff, but at this point you're ahead a little bit. You can take a couple more risks. Um, not able to knock off the Heavy Duty Boots on Zapdos. That's pretty big, seeing as how the rocks are up. Um, and we're going to have Iron Treads come in hard here. Block up maybe potential Volt Switch or something. Now he's going to Rapid Spin for damage because... The boots are already knocked off. He probably has Iron Head and Earthquake. That's probably, honestly, one of the stronger moves he can do. But also, the Rapid Spin's a great call, because like you saw there, he Rapid Spun, got the Speed Boost. Uh, risk, of, risk of Paralysis, again. Like, I don't really endorse that play, but, I mean, this is a high-risk, high-reward play. Hapkins kind of gotten lucky on a lot of these non-static Paras. And he's able to get the Speed Boost, and that means KO the Gardevoir after that comes in. Which is great. Um, now Glaring Sloking's going to come in. Eat an Earthquake. Um, and at this point, things are kind of falling apart. Rapid Spin uh, does give him the Speed Boost, but also paralyzes him as he dies to the Heat Wave. So, uh, too little too late there. Shadow Ball's going to come out, pick up that KO. And then we've already seen the Surf is going to be able to KO the Colossal here. And Papcoon, after a couple seasons of getting dropped on his neck in a lot of these big games, um, comes out on top here. So it's a big win for him. Congratulations. Um, Mike said in the in the course of this battle that he's got to make some changes to the team. Uh, he suggested some changes, and then he ended up sitting on them. So um, we'll see when those changes come. He's got another week of the, the team he's got at least, though. Uh, let me grab a sip of Coke here. Ah. Um, so now we can move on to... Logan versus Mitch. This was our first game to go up this season. Logan's first game in the South. Mitch is a veteran of the South. Um, let's see how this goes. There's some interesting stuff to talk about in this. So we got Mouse Grotta leading off against Bastidon. I see Corviknight come in. Corviknight is the um, kind of definitive check in the league to Mouse Grotta. Gashon's going to come in on that Lava Plume. Able to eat that up as a spike scope. Now, I don't, I don't love this. Uh, the th reason I don't love the spikes going up is because Logan has such bad hazard clearing. If spikes go up in his end of the field, and they are likely to, seeing as how he's facing a Hisuian Samurott, he's just going to have to defog him. He doesn't have any way of rapid spinning keeping his spikes up. I think he would have been better served going for a Stealth Rock there. Um, not a big thing, just a little, little gripe I'm going to lay out there. Um, so he's going to get his leftovers knocked off here. As he fires off a Muddy Water, doesn't do as much damage as I think he'd like, as he then eats a Toxic and fires off another Muddy Water. Logan's going to start to catch a couple breaks here, because he's going to go, I believe on this turn, go hard into Bastion, and the U-turn misses. All of Gliger's attacks now, I mean, I guess Toxic is lower uh, than this, probably like 60% accuracy, but U-turn, Earthquake, Knockoff are now all 75% accuracy. That's pretty rough. Um... Yeah, as you can see, he's going to actually miss an Earthquake here. Doesn't go down to the body press, but he's, um... Now the knockoff comes out and gets rid of the Corviknight's leftovers. Uh, r rough run here. So, uh, we get the W turn, now we get Spide Ops versus Dusclops. Taunt comes up, stops the Will-O-Wisp from coming. So, let's talk about this right here, because this is actually super interesting. So, knock off the Heavy Duty Boots as Alola Ninetales comes in, and we don't see the snow go up. Now, first, I thought, oh man, Mitch has absolutely Logan'd it, and he's forgotten to um, change his ability from, uh, what is it, Snow Cloak? Snow Cloak to Snow Warning. But this is, I think, clearly intentional when you see the rest of the moveset, and also when you look at Logan's team and see that he's got Backscalibur. He doesn't want to give Backscalibur free, um, free snow. I think this is a really smart move by Mitch. Um, yeah, I, I like this move. I think it's good. So Bastion's going to come out on the nasty plot. 
Uh, it's gonna have to leave. Doesn't have a way to KO the Bastiodon. I probably would just fired off some, try to get some damage there, seeing as how you knew Bastiodon could really shut you down. Heavy Slam's gonna come out and crit and do three percent, um, because obviously he trains very heavy and four X resists uh, the Heavy Slam. That was probably a forty base power move. Four X resists it, essentially a ten base power move. That crit for fifteen. Uh, if you followed any of that logic, good, good job. So, uh, Heatran's obviously going to force this Bastiodon out um, with another Lava Plume. Gastron's going to have to try to get healthy here, as it does. Um, and the question is, is it going to stay in? Yes, it is. And try to finish off this Gligar. Hits another Muddy Water. Takes it out. Gastron's getting low, though. So, you're probably going to... So, yeah, he's going to let this go down. Get a free switch into something to try to deal with it. He goes into Haunter. Goes for the Terra Blast. Um... I mean, I guess I was going to say really interesting play. It's not super interesting because Haunter could have KO'd this by just going for Sludge Wave, but obviously he wanted to cover himself in case the Heat Train came in. Um, also, yeah, I mean, if the Dust Gloss comes in, I guess it does slightly more damage. I don't know. Um, but goes for the Terror Blast, doesn't pick up the KO, but effectively, you know, it's taken care of because the Nine Tails is going to go for Substitute on that turn. So Sub Nasty Plot, Freeze Dry. Um, I'm guessing Moon Blast is the last one. This is obviously not designed to be a snow warning set. So, um, Mitch just put put on the ability that, you know, cost him the least. So, good for him there. I like that. I like that. But now this Haunter, obviously, since it outsped, is Choice Scarfed. And we're going to see Sue and Samrock come in and go for the Aqua Cutter to try to get off as much damage as possible. Decent amount of damage on the Corviknight, as he's going to just start getting up those uh, spikes with Ceaseless Edge. This is going to force the defog out from Corviknight um, eventually here. Um, so we're going to see the defog come out here, uh, get rid of his own spike. That's actually, I think, probably that's a net positive for um, for for Mitch here. He's able to, he didn't take any extra damage on Samurott, and he's able to get rid of the spike on his side of the field for little to no cost, right? Now the Bastion is going to come and eat a Will O Wisp. No, this is the second time Dusclop's been on the field, and it's gone for will o -Wisp both times. The first time it was taunted, so it couldn't actually go for it. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll circle back to that, but I do want to take note of this Dusclop's is just going for will o -Wisp, right? Um, so Hack's going to come out, do a decent chunk of damage, and we're just going to roar that Dusclop's out. Now Skarada's going to come out, um, and we're going to see it keep doing what it's doing, just kind of going for big attacks here with Flower Trick. Crits on the Corviknight for no damage. Heatran's going to come out, looks like keep up momentum, and you turn out. Kind of a surprising play here. Uh, Mitch letting the Heatran go down to the Terra Blast ground from Haunter. Um, I don't I don't love that. I don't I don't really get his thought process behind that. Maybe he was just thinking Logan will over predict and go for Sludge Wave to hit an incoming Meowscarada. But Logan's got good checks to Meowskarada. Um I think maybe, I don't know if he was just trying to play to a choke there, but he's fallen behind pretty fast here. Soon Samrod's going to come out and just go for the flip turn. Now he's trying to take back momentum here. Dusclock's going to come in, fire off another Will-O-Wisp. For me at this point, I would have been attempting to get Baxcalibur in on these Will-O-Wisps because uh, Baxcalibur has Thermal Exchange, Great news about Baxcalibur is it's Logan proof. Its primary ability is Thermal Exchange, so it actually can't, he can't forget to put Thermal Exchange on. So if he's hit with a fire move, gets an attack boost, and he's immune to um, burn, so can't be Will O Wisp. I think it might even give him an attack boost since it is a fire type move. I'm not sure about that. Um, I haven't tested it enough, I haven't seen it come up enough, but. Um, and you see him, I don't know, try to play around the hex or something here. Uh, so he's just going to fire off another willow, ends up just getting roared out. Uh, Logan's going to try to sack this Bastia down to this Aqua Cutter here. Um, and even with the crit, manages to live, which is pretty surprising. Um, going to flip turn out. Meowskarada's going to come in. Corviknight, uh, the natural enemy of Meowskarada, is just able to shut down most of its offense most of the time. Finally, get the spy ops in, and this is where Logan is setting up the end game right now. He's playing kind of fast and loose with the spy ops, but also it's a spy ops, not a big deal if he plays fast and loose with it, right? So he's just gonna knock off, right? He doesn't he doesn't care if this spy ops gets burned. This spy ops is here to only do a couple of things. 
We got the sticky web, so that means if this is Choice Scarf Meowscarada, um, a plus one Backscalibur is going to be able to outspeed it. He's going to taunt this, so that way it can't pain split or even attempt to Will-O-Wisp. And he's going to go down here. He's going to try to set up with the Backscalibur, which he successfully does with his Dragon Dance. And it's over from here. Um... Mitch doesn't really have any more counterplay. Let's just hope to live an Icicle Spear, which because of the knockoff and the chip damage he got, not going to be able to. Um, and the Meowskarat is going to be slower than this, even if it was Choice Scarfed because of the sticky web Logan put up. Um, manages to outspeed it with a plus one back Excalibur and wins the game. So, well done there. Um, Logan bided his time, and he like just knew what his win conditions were, and he achieved it. I think he probably could have attempted to set up even earlier if he were so inclined. Because uh, he's got such, like, Baxalber has such a good matchup versus this team. But he played it nice and safe, and he did everything he needed to do to come away with a win. So good job there. Now it is time for our marquee match of the week. Marquee match of the week. Now we have a theme. Marquee match of the week is actually the two new guys here. Um, we've got Keenan. Hold on, I'm gonna remember this. This is Joel and Keenan, right? Okay. It's gonna take me a while to adjust, guys, okay? Especially now since both of your things are G something. G so this is Gaios a ghost. Gaios a ghost, we're gonna say. And George's um which is also confusing because your name's not George, it's Keenan. George is a name. So, gonna take some uh, adjustment, but we have Joel, who um, lives in Japan. Wait, yeah, I had that right. Joel lives in Japan. He's the uh, Green Bay Pachirisu. And we have Keenan, who, as far as I know, does not live in Japan. Uh, and he's the Pittsburgh Piplups. Okay. Introductions out of the way. Uh, two new guys facing off week one. Um, just a note, I know scheduling is probably going to be a little bit more difficult with Joel because he's in Japan. And then also we had an extension. They ended up playing on, I think, Wednesday even. Much later than I like these uh, these games to happen. I'm going to give them a pass because it's the first week, but um, please try to get your games done before then. Going forward, unless there's like holidays or extenuating circumstances where you need an extension, Monday's the goal to have these games done, so that way I can like, the, the week is kind of underway and we can get going, right? So, earlier is better, but uh, you know, Monday at the latest. Most people go on Monday, not a big deal to go on Monday. But okay, so, um, we see mostly a straight up Sun team here from uh, Joel, and um, I mean, a pretty standard looking balance team over here from Keenan. So let's hop into this here. We've got Empoleon leading off against Torkoal. They're both going to get their rocks up. Empoleon's going to get out of there. And Torkoal's going to rapid spin. So good thing here. I've, I've talked a lot in the past couple seasons about rapid spin. Or it's like sometimes rocks going up. Sometimes you're going to be able to keep them up for a long time. Sometimes you're just buying turns. Like... And Plan put up those stealth rocks and got a flip turn. That was a very safe switch into Crocodile. And now he can just start to go from there. So you the safest way to get in Crocodile. And he goes for the choice, the or the stone edge here. Gets a crit, doesn't matter there. Now gets a Moxie boost. Now this is starting to get scary. Um, I probably think Great Tusk should have come in here. If he's choiced, which is potential. Um, if he's choiced, then you're 4x resistant. If he, like, he's got nothing that can really hit Great Tusk. The strongest thing he can go for is Earthquake if he's not choiced. Um, and you're going to be able to live that, especially because you're going to get a defense boost because of the sun, and you're going to be able to kill with body press or whatever. I think that should have been what happened. Said he goes into Weavile here, and big mistake. This is a choice scarf crocodile. Got the plus one Moxie boost. Managed to hit another stone. Crit didn't matter there either. So... So Joel finds himself down um, six to four very early in this game, but now he knows this definitely is choice scarf. He's gonna go into the Great Tusk and force out this crocodile. 
Can't play around. It's got to go for the body press. I guess he could have played around. Like, even though that was a plus two, um, like, Stone Edge, it was going to be doing nothing to Great Tusk. He probably could have done something to try to take advantage of a potentially incoming Galarian Weezing. Uh, Alex not to. That's fine. Um, didn't want to, didn't want to fuck around and find out, right? So we're going to go hard and Goldango. Very little damage from the Strange Team. I see Make It Rain come out very good damage despite being resisted. Um, hard into Great Tusk. Now this was a risky play and he got lucky here. This is a big turning point in the game. If Keenan hits this, man, is it going to be so hard for... Like, you just you just lost a big piece of equity on this team, a big check to Crocodile. Um, especially because everything else is weak to ground on the team. Um, and unless this Goldengo is Choice Scarf, everything is outsped and KO'd. Like, this was... This could have sealed... That Fire Blast hitting, Terra boosted in the sun, would have absolutely cooked this Great Tusk, because it actually does take a Fire Blast later, so we'll see how much damage it, it would have done. Um... It would have been game over at this point. Uh, Crocodile would have been able to pick up the final three KOs there, and uh, it would have been game over. Um, but he dodges it. Sun wears off. Glaren Weezing's going to come in. Uh, levitate above the Earthquake. Good move there. Goldengo's going to come in on the Strange Team. Uh, also, I don't know if he had Will-O-Wisp. I would have been super tempted to click Will-O-Wisp there. Smart move just going to the fifth Strange Team. Pick away at this thing. Uh, Make It Rain's going to come out and actually pick up the KO, which like I think is probably indicating maybe this is choice, and I think that Keenan thought the same thing. Maybe he get off a cheeky rapid spin as this thing tries to uh, switch out, but actually goes for the recover here. Shadow Sneak just for the chip, because he knows he's going down at this point. And now he actually hits this Fire Blast. Does 96%. Uh, Absolutely would have cooked, even not in the sun, absolutely would have cooked that great tusk. Um, so real bad luck that he didn't manage to uh, catch that last time. Um, now he's going to go into Torkoal. Torkoal's going to have to eat a Scorching Sands. Very smart for him to go for that because it covered any switch out and also um, would have been guaranteed to hit and KO the great tusk. So smart would go for the Scorching Sands there. Going to be able to get rid of Torkoal here. Um, but now Raging Bolt's going to come in. Thunderclap's going to pick up the KO. I think you had to stay in and attack that. Thunderbolt's going to KO this. And now there's just no pieces left to take care of this Raging Bolt. Um, like, he does a good job. Like, he baits out the Draco Meteor there to weaken this thing. But he just doesn't really have the the pieces left. Getting up the Stealth Rocks may, may not have been a good idea. I think he actually would have been better off to let the Empoleon go down. Especially if he had, like... Uh, looks like he may not have been. Um, he would have had more more HP, though. And at this point, there's not really much he can do. Plays around the Thunderclap smartly there. Um, now we're just going to see Roar to KO that. And the battle's over at this point. Empoleon can't KO what's left. Goldengo's going to come in. He's got Ice Beam Flip Turn. Flip Turn's his strongest move to hit him, and we're going to see it go and do 19 damage there. It's just a matter of time before he gets... Uh, the KO here. Um, I don't know if we see any spit F drops, but um, we're just gonna kind of let this let's go here. Uh, did that do more? That would have been okay. So he's not torrent. He is competitive. I guess his only hope here is to get competitive boost. I think he should be going for a freeze potentially, right? Um, but I, not much more to say about this. There's just like there's no game left. He needs to go for Ice Beam, get a Freeze, maybe hope for a Spadef drop on the Shadow Ball as he freezes, that way he gets a competitive boost. And then maybe at that... But then you're still going to be outsped and KO'd by Thunderclap on the uh, on the Raging Bolt. So, um, no good there. Uh, Joel's going to come away with the win. Needs to recognize that he was very lucky that he dodged that Fire Blast. Um, but did a good job of taking advantage of that opportunity and coming away with his first win in the ABL. Tough break for Keenan. I don't think he played badly at all. Um, I really I don't think there was any huge mistakes he made. Got just bad luck there, and then probably needed to find a better way to prep for Raging Bolt. Um, so that's that's pretty much all I got there. 
Uh, let's head over and take a look at the standings. Not much to break down here. Teams that won are up top. Uh, teams that didn't win aren't. Um, and uh, it, this this Peru thing, uh, it's not updating accurately. We'll consolidate all that. We'll resolve this rather, not consolidate. That's not the word. We'll resolve this at the end of the season. Um, but what did I say we're doing? We're just doing four teams. So uh, the right now, if it ended today, the pits, the Piplup, actually no, War Turtles would be would be the War Turtles and probably I don't know one of these two. Like you can't really say what the playoffs would be. There's still so many weeks left, right? Um, let's head over to, oh, geez, I had it misframed. My bad, guys, my bad. Um, okay, so let's head over and look at what changes were made. Really just one change, and it is a change. I can't remember if I said it on the podcast last week, um, or if Joel just manifested it, but it is one that Brett had suggested. Um, undid his week zero transaction of, I think he had... Gliscor here and dropped for Galarian, Articuno, and um, what's it called? Fortress. And then just goes ahead and goes ahead and picks up Walking Wake. Um, now, here's what I'm going to say about this team because the construction looks like is a six Pokemon race. It looks like he's going to be bringing this these six Pokemon every week, just a hard uh, Sun team, and going from there. But the thing is, Sudowoodo and Pachirisu probably aren't coming. If Sudowoodo's coming, it's like a sturdy Custap Pokemon just to get a Stealth Rocks and then like Head Smash or I think it gets Explosion. Um, that's probably what you're doing with Sudowoodo, right? Um, and then Pachirisu, unlikely to come unless it's got somehow an amazing matchup. I can't think of a... A single time where there'd be an amazing Pachirisu matchup, right? But mostly there's a mascot. But Leafeon works on a Sun team. Like, it can be a problem for some teams, depending on matchup. Um, Altaria, not great on a Sun team, but, I mean, it... I do think that it has a place to combat other weather. Not that I think there is a little bit of other weather. Um, so, could be helpful there. Uh, Charizard, great on a Sun team. Like, I think, th like, th these are the seven you're going to see most of the time. But Altaria has a spot. Leafeon has a spot. Sudowoodo, much more niche spot, but could be around. So, don't be fooled in just playing for these six, because especially Charizard, because of the infrastructure for this team, could really come in and uh, cause some problems. Um... And then a couple of people changed their Terras. Nothing really to write home about. Uh, but I think that's all to talk about there. Let's head over to the schedule. Look at next week. Can I, is, is there? No. 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 Yeah, that one. That one looks fine. So we've got Logan taking on Joel. Um, Joel coming off like a really exciting win. Uh, oh, Logan also coming off a win he's very proud of. Uh, let's see who's going to continue the momentum there. Uh, Keenan and Mike both coming off a loss. Obviously, I think Keenan looked better in his loss uh, than Mike did. So let's see if uh, Mike can rebound and show a little bit of life. Uh, Mitch and Papkin. Papkin want to keep those winning ways going. He's had a couple of stinker seasons um, and is going to want to keep up the momentum against Mitch here. Uh, I think that's pretty much all we got to talk about. Um, so thank you all for listening to this uh, edition of the ABL Review South Divi or South uh, Variety, um, and uh, I'll see you next week. Goodbye.